Hi, welcome back to Pet Pals. It's been quite a while since we've had our last show. A lot of things have changed uh, in the world and in the shelter, but we're glad to be back with you and introducing you to some of our adoptable pets. Uh, the first dog that we have for you today is Amethyst, and she is currently our longest canine resident. She arrived um, back in May, which isn't too long in you know the standards of all of the animals, but it's quite a long stay for an adoptable dog. Um, and she is, as you can see, quite a playful dog. She's um, very affectionate. She loves attention. Um, she walks nicely on a leash. She is a dog that's very confident and approaches strangers with a friendly attitude. Um, she knows sit, she takes treats nicely, and she's still quite a young dog at two to three years old. Um, she is a pit bull mix and uh, you know, that's one of the things that can make it a little bit more challenging for any of the dogs here in the shelter. Um, but she is, is definitely one of my favorite dogs and I know a volunteer favorite as well. You recently took her to an event, didn't you, Bethany? What was that all about? So I did, I, uh, we got an email from a couple of wedding vendors, which is not an, a usual um, type of email that we get. And they wanted to do a photo shoot for um, you know, their various products. And they asked us to come and bring some adoptable dogs. And Amethyst was one of the three that went. And she did an amazing job. Everyone there was so impressed at uh, not only how beautiful the dog was, um, but how well behaved she was and how nicely she sat. And she wasn't jumping up on people, especially in you know, expensive rented wedding <laughs> attire so um, she did really well at that event and I think it showcases just like how amazing she, she truly is yeah she seems like an awesome dog why do, you, why do you think she's still here well like I mentioned a little bit earlier it can be more challenging for pit bulls in general because there are a lot of of rental properties who have limits and restrictions on what types of pets that you can own and pit bulls tend to be one of the the dogs that are on every one of those lists but also amethyst has some medical conditions um, that make it a little bit more challenging she does have a low-grade heart murmur um, and as you can see probably from like all of the redness on her skin she suffers with some skin infections some skin allergies. Her fur is a really short coat, which makes it a lot more um, prone to sunburn and skin irritation, and not everybody wants to take those things on. Um, if you are willing to take those things on, um, it's not something that's super hard to do. She takes a Benadryl, um, like most people with allergies take a Benadryl, um, and most heart murmurs actually don't develop into heart disease. It's just something that you want to monitor for exercise intolerance and things like that, and obviously, um, you know, just the standard checkups with your vet. But she is, is an amazing dog, and I hope that she can, can find an adoptable family here soon. Um, she is a little bit picky about her canine friends, so if you have an existing dog, you want to make sure that you're definitely following our policy and bringing your dog in to meet with her. Um, if you wanted more information about Amethyst, you can always um, book an appointment and come in and visit. And we changed the way that we do that now, so it's online. You have to make an appointment, and you can go to visit fcac.as.me to do that. Our next canine guest is Julie, and uh, she is one of our older dogs on the adoption floor at seven years old, and she's an interesting mix. Um, she's listed as a pit bull mix. We're not quite sure what else is in there, but she definitely has quite a unique look, and Julie does have kind of a sad story. Um, she came to us after her owner passed away, and that's not something that happens a lot, but it is something that, that does happen from time to time. You know, owners pass away for whatever reason, the existing family and friends are unable to take on the pet and so they surrender them to us so that we can find them um, another suitable home. Um, because Julie is a little bit older, it can be, and a pit bull, it can, and black, there are a lot of things that, you know, people often overlook. It can make it a little bit more challenging for them to find a home. But Julie can also be a little bit more fearful of strangers. Um, she's a dog that kind of barks in her kennel to make strangers go away. Um, so then people are a little off put by that. But it is important when you're walking by to meet the dogs outside because they can be quite different out there. Um, and with a dog like Julie, who's a little bit nervous in, in new environments and things like that, you may want to meet her more than once. Julie's previous owner said she didn't like other dogs. Is that true? So because we saw that on there, we obviously wanted to test that to make sure, you know, how she was going to be walking by other kennels all the time. And while she can be a little bit grumbly when the dogs themselves are walking by her kennel or she's walking by their kennel, when they're out on a leash outside, she actually does remarkably well. We've now used her as our dog testing dog. We parallel walk her with a lot of other dogs, and she really seems to enjoy the company of other dogs. 
Since she's a little bit older, what do you think her activity level would be? So she's actually quite spry and spunky. I mentioned that she really likes other dogs and she loves to play. As soon as you get her outside, she sees another dog. She's immediately bouncing around and play bowing. And she's much uh, more different in the company of a dog than she would be in the company of a, of a stranger. Um, we actually tried to take her to um, a doggy daycare, but because there were so many new people there and so, in a, such a kind of overwhelming new environment, she actually didn't do well. But if you have you know, an existing dog in your house, or you have dog friends, she would really love that kind of, of interaction. Um, and Julie is on our, our front floor of our adoption floor, so she's very easy uh, to be seen. We have profiles now, um, and you're going to you know, be able to check all of those out as always, but they're now on QR codes so that you can use your tablets um, or your uh, smartphone to figure out all the information about adoptable dog Julie. The last dog that we have for you today is Winston, and Winston is a uh, about three to four year old uh, shepherd mix, and he is just a big goofball. Um, he is all over the place. He loves to play. He loves to run, um, and he also has this amazingly uh, crazy long tail and he has something that we call happy tail so if you walk by his kennel you'll be like why is it covered in blankets and that's because he has happy tail which means that his tail is constantly wagging so much um, that he hits it against the the wall and it can snap and break parts of the tail and then it bleeds um, so the wall the um all of the blankets are there for kind of his protection um, but if you're thinking of taking winston home also you know things on the coffee table uh, might be at risk of getting swatted off by a tail. So you want to keep those things in mind. Winston is more of a project dog. Um, he does know sit and some things, but he could really benefit from some training. He can pull a little bit, and he definitely needs a little bit of confidence building as well. Staff mentioned that he has a favorite activity. What's that? So uh, Winston's favorite thing in the entire world, which we discovered this summer, was being in the pool. So at first he was really hesitant and didn't want to get in it. And now we cannot get him out of the pool. It is a challenge um, to get Winston out of the pool. Um, we put toys in there. He just is constantly biting at the water, playing at it, splashing. Um, you get wet if you're out with Winston in the pool because he, there is no safe splash zone out there. Um, and he really, really enjoys it. So if you, if you are a person who is looking for a dog that wants to be in the water with you, um, Winston would be great. He loves the sprinkler. He tries to attack the sprinkler. Just any time he can be around water is, is really when he's the happiest. So online it says you have, to book an, you have to book an appointment to visit him. Why is that? So you have to book an appointment in general to visit, but you have to ask specifically to see Winston because he's not on our general adoption floor. And that's because Winston doesn't show well in his kennel. So some dogs, it's because they're a little bit fearful of strangers and there's that barrier there that prevents them from escaping. So then they're really like loud and try to get you to go away. Um, but other dogs get really frustrated because they can't get to you. And I'm not sure exactly where Winston falls on that spectrum, but it can be a little bit off-putting and that's not his, his true nature. So we don't want people to, to see him and think that he's uh, an aggressive dog or a scary dog. So this is just our way of allowing Winston to show himself in the best light like he's doing right now. Um, and if you wanted to meet Winston, again, you still have to book an appointment to come to the shelter by going to visit fcac.as.me, but it could be beneficial to send us an email or give us a call ahead of time to let us know that you did book that appointment and you are interested in meeting with Winston. So the first cat that we have for you today is, is probably the longest resident in the shelter if, if you know, um, he might be, you know, top two, but he's definitely been with us for quite some time. And he's a little hungry this morning. <laughs> um, we're shooting this and he hasn't quite gotten his breakfast yet. So um, he can be hangry um, and he loves a good churu, that's for sure. Um, but Decker is, is a cat that's about six to seven years old and he is um, definitely a, a cat that the volunteers at least are, are talking about how much they enjoy him. He, he sits on a lap, he's very social, he's very outgoing, he's very confident. Um, there's really no restrictions on the type of, of home that Decker can, can go into um, except for one, um, and that's that he just can't live in a home with dogs. Um, sometimes we do some dog testing with our cats, we walk a dog through, and he has quite a uh, a visceral reaction to seeing the dog. So it just wouldn't be safe for anybody um, to have Decker living in, in a home with another dog. So Decker's been with us since December, early December 2021. 
has he been at the shelter the whole time? Actually, Decker spent uh, four months of his stay with us in a foster home, and that's because he came to us as a cat um, with wounds of unknown origin, which means if they have a bite or a puncture um, or something like that, and we can't identify where that, that wound came from, we don't know if it came from a, a rabid animal. So the health department requires that they be quarantined um, because we didn't have a vaccine history for a period of four months. So we're very fortunate in that we have um, several people who will take those animals on and follow the strict protocols for, for that quarantine. And then after he um, finished that, he came back to the shelter to be made available for adoption. So we know Decker doesn't prefer the company of dogs. How's he feel about other cats? Decker actually does really well with other cats. He actually lives in one of our kitty cabanas right now. And since he's been in there, he's had a couple of different roommates. Um, he lived with Elfie for a while, and then Elfie um, got moved out. And then now he's living with Waylon, and um, he's doing really well, um, engaging, and, and he's definitely showing um, his true personality with uh, the visitors, staff, volunteers in there as well. So. Um, he's a little nervous out here with the lights and the different people and being in a different room than he's accustomed to. Um, but if you visit him in the Kitty Cabana, you'll see what a wonderful companion he, he truly can be for your family. So it's kitten season. Um, summer is always, spring and summer are always known for being kitten season. So we wanted to showcase one of our kittens, but kittens tend to go pretty quickly. Um, but Judo is, has been with us for a couple of weeks now and he still hasn't found his forever home. He's about four months old now and he is um, a beautiful little uh, gray tabby. And he does have a, a grumpy face sometimes, but um, you know, when you walk by his cage, he, he's starting to come out more. He, you know, when it's quiet at night, he's just your typical crazy playful kitten and he's really um, starting to blossom, but he does need a family that's gonna be a little bit more patient, a little bit more understanding. Uh, maybe um, a family with kids that are a little bit older would probably be the best fit for Judo. So Judo is part of a special program here at the shelter. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So Judo is part of the Frady Cat program and he's already come a long way. Um, so the Frady Cat program is for cats that are gonna be the ones that are maybe what we call like hissy spitty babies where you kind of approach them and they want you to go away because they're scared so they hiss at you. Um, or they're the ones that are always hiding in their cages. And we've been working with Judo by wrapping him in his little burrito and kind of carrying him around, getting him exposed to new things in a swaddle which makes him feel a little bit more secure and now when you walk by his cage he's not always hiding he's coming up to the front he accepts petting um, at night really he's playing all the time you know you come in the morning and he's made a huge mess because he's been all over the place um, so with a little bit of patience um, he can you know be a typical kitten but he just um, is probably going to revert a little bit in a new home so they have to be prepared for that that initial shyness will shelter frady cats always be fearful not always. We've had um, a lot of cats recently graduate from the, the Frady Cat program. Um, Fiat used to be very fearful, always hiding, and now she's a cat that wants to sit on your lap and be held and carried around. And um, she got adopted recently, and they said she took a couple of days, but now she's back to you know wanting to be social again. Um, Poppy was another kitten that was in the Frady Cat program. Reese. Um, so they all have the potential at their own varying rates. You know, some of them do it a little bit quicker than others. Um, to, to graduate from that program, but you always want to remember that when we're changing their environment, they may regress a little bit just because that's just scary in and of itself. Um, so you might want to visit with Judo if you think you're going to be a good fit. And again, that process has changed. You can't just show up to the shelter. You need to make an appointment and you can do that by going to visit fcac.as.me. You can pick times of the week. We're open six days a week, Monday through Saturday. The last guest that we have for you today comes from our small animal room. This is Marigold, and she is one of eight rabbits that are currently living um, in our facility. Um, we've had a crazy amount of rabbits the last couple of years, so I don't know whether it's been COVID or something else, but um, we've definitely seen a spike in, in the rabbits that we have. Um, Marigold is a female, and she is listed as an adult, and she's a Jersey woolly mix. Um, a lot of people don't realize that just like dogs and cats can have different breeds, rabbits can as well. Well, um, we have some New Zealand rabbits back there. We have lion heads. We have some Americans. We have all different kinds back there. Um, she's probably the most uh, different, most uh, unique that we have at this point. You mentioned that she's an adult as opposed to a specific age. Why is that? So it can be really hard to uh, to estimate the age for for the rodents and the small animals. So we typically will will just say juvenile 
or adult unless we have specific information from a previous owner or sometimes we'll have um, we've had bunnies born in, in our facility um, so we know how old those guys are but it, we don't want to say an incorrect age because it's so difficult we just kind of um, use the broader strokes so beside rabbits what other animals are in the shelter small animal room right now so there's the eight rabbits and then there are five guinea pigs um, and then there's a, a Quaker parrot, which is a new one for us. Um, and then we also have a red-eared slider, which is something that's pretty common during the summer months for, for us to have in our facility. And all of them live in the small animal room. Um, we do have a situation now where there's a, an area, PetSmart, I believe it's the one in North Frederick, that also houses some of our, our guinea pigs when we've had rats and things. Um, so you can you see them in a different environment, um, a little bit more um, flexible maybe with people's time schedules to, to go to a PetSmart and check them out. Um, but anytime you're adopting a small animal or considering it, you want to make sure that you're doing your research because whether it's a rabbit like Marigold or one of the guinea pigs, um, they have a lot more special care needs than your typical cat or dog. It's not just, you know, you put the kibble in the bowl every day and fill the water bowl up, clean the litter box, take it outside. Um, rabbits need litter boxes. They need their hay that they eat. They need their pellets that they eat. Um, they need um, their various toys and enrichment. They need their veggies. So they have a lot of things and you wanna make sure that you're, you're taking care of all of those things. And depending on the breed and the fur, like Marigold, you need to make sure she's staying brushed because not too long ago she had some, some mats in her, her ear fluff. Um, so those had to be trimmed out. So you just wanna make sure that you're really taking into consideration all of the work that a, a rabbit or any small animal could really be. Um, if you are interested in visiting any of the small animals or any of, of our adoptables, again, the process has changed. We allow 10 people to come into our facility at a time um, by appointment. Um, and you wanna make an appointment for everyone in your family. And you can do that by going to visit fcac.as.me. Um, you can see all the times. We are open a little bit later on Wednesday to accommodate people with work schedules. We're also open on Saturday. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to come in and check out all of our adoptable pets. You can always watch them on Pet Pals as well. Um, we've changed that up in that we're not doing a new episode every week, but every two weeks we'll be um, bringing you fresh uh, episodes of Pet Pals featuring the adoptable animals at Frederick County Animal Control and Pet Adoption Center. We wanna thank you for tuning in and we hope to see you here um, for our next episode.